Oh. Sorry, wrong button. And yeah, thank you. Uh, fantastic point. Control is a really salient uh, factor for frustration. And two really interesting uh, results from general education. Number one uh, is that if, if the teacher thinks the student has control over the situation, they feel more frustration. Now, if I can give you an example uh, for the Japanese class. If, if, a, if a student is not talking, they don't want to, or not doing their work, if the teacher thinks that student is, is just doing it to annoy them, or just doing it because they're tired, they will be more frustrated. If they know that student has a personal issue going on in their life, right? If they can empathize with that, they will have less frustration. So that makes a lot of sense, I think. So when we, have con when we understand what's going on in the student's life, maybe we have less frustration. And the second one, um, pardon me, uh, second one, Chang also talks about um, uh, control as well. And definitely, uh, if the teacher doesn't have control, that is actually what breeds frustration. It's not, it's not student misbehavior that makes us frustrated. It's lack of control that makes us frustrated. So that's really uh, an important point. Cool. Is frustration good or bad? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> That's what actually we're talking about, if like a frustration is on the negative, or if it can be positive. Because in, in case with anxiety, for example, there are two types, like facilitating and debilitating anxiety. Yeah. And so it can both lead to like negative outcomes, but also positive outcomes. That's right, that's right, yeah. I don't need to be yeah. here, because that's another fantastic answer. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, 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 it's fantastic, it's fantastic. No, I don't mean it like that, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm wondering that too. Is, is there a good or a bad? Now actually, uh, the literature, especially the, the quantitative studies, do suggest that it's, it's bad. Um, some people say frustration is stress. You know, definitionally, it is the same thing. Um, and it negatively, this is not teaching, this is in um, business. But in business, it negatively correlates with things like job performance, uh, physical health, absenteeism, and, and turnover. Uh, it's also a, a precursor to burnout, it has been described as. So if somebody is frustrated for a long time, they will burn out. And if we look at burnout studies, there have been a lot of burnout studies in general education, and they're really uh, negative consequences. So um, teachers who, who are feeling burnt out, their students get lower test scores, is one example. And the students, the other important thing, the students know when the teachers are burnt out and they feel that the teacher can't support them and that's one of the, the dangers as well. But, yeah, is it good? Can it be a catalyzer? I have, I have very recently read some really interesting work, uh, Gollenbeck, which is uh, her chapter on identity in Gary Barkhusen's book, which I'm sure most, many people are familiar with. And, she, and this paper by Gollenbeck and Kleger. And in that, um, they talk about a teacher who was feeling very frustrated with their grammar teaching. And that frustration uh, catalyzed them, pushed them into making changes in their teaching. And actually, I think that's a really positive way to look at frustration. Um, and, and you mentioned, Lena, you mentioned uh, facilitating anxiety and debilitating anxiety, yeah. I, I wonder if there's a connection. I don't think it could be exactly the same, but I, I do wonder if there's some, under some conditions, frustration could be, could be positive. Perhaps it could. Right, okay. Uh, so, so that's frustration, I think, um, the, the basics. But what I want to talk about today is, is regulating it. How, how, do we, how do we deal with it when it's there? Um, Emotion regulation, it basically means the processes through which uh, individuals modify the path of an emotion. So it could mean uh, many things. Uh, emotion regulation can mean uh, making your emotion longer or shorter, right? So if you're feeling happy, you want it to continue. That's emotion regulation. 
If you're angry, you want it to stop. That's emotion regulation. Emotion regulation also means uh, controlling your symptoms. So it could be hiding it, controlling your face. Or if you have a very you know, fast heartbeat, you know, trying to calm down, that, that's also uh, emotion regulation. Uh, it's also things like generating emotions. Yeah? Um, I have spoken to teachers that the simple way is you feel tired in the morning, but you have to teach. So what do you do? You know, some people listen to music, some people have a coffee, some people jump up and down. I, I don't think it matters, but you know, we, do, we are able to generate these feelings in ourselves as well. And all of this comes under the umbrella of, of emotion regulation. Emotion regulation. And we're going to, you know, personally, the model of emotion regulation I like is, is by Gross. And it's a really simple model. And it, and it comes back to this idea of how emotions arise. We have a situation, we notice it, we praise it, and we respond. We have an emotional response. Because actually, when we use this model, we can think about strategies to regulate our emotions, right? And those strategies could, could happen here, or here, or here, or here. At the point of the situation occurring, we could, we could regulate. Uh, at the point we notice it, we could regulate. At the point we are appraising it, we could regulate. And we can actually deal with the emotion after it's happened. We can deal with the, uh, the effects of the emotion. I'd like to show you some examples, if that's okay, just to, to make it clear. Uh, teacher example again. Same example of you are talking and two students talk and you feel frustrated. Right? There would be different ways that you could deal with that, deal with your frustration in that situation. Uh, strategy one would be to make changes to the world that you are in. Okay? So split the students up. Is, is an example of an emotion regulation strategy that, that would actually reduce your emotion. Okay, they're talking, I'm going to split them up. Okay. Uh, if you're being more proactive, if you know that these two students don't work well together, you, you already don't put them together. Right? We do this all the time, I think, in class. We, we are able to uh, set up our classroom in a way that's productive. But we can make changes to the external world. We can redirect our attention. We can ignore it. And it may be that that won't be successful for you. But again, thinking about context, are these two students, do they always do this or is this rare? In which case, maybe if I walk over here, and if I go to my favorite students, of course we don't have favorite students. But you know, if we go to the students who are working well over here, then you might find that you uh, can get some more positivity or something like that. Uh, you can change the way you feel about the stressor, and I think this is the, really the most important one. Um, and it's not something you can do, I think it's not something you can do quickly. Uh, maybe sometimes you can, but, but usually it takes a long time. But one way is trying to understand your student's perspective. You know, okay, these two students are talking. Why are they talking? Are they bored? Have I been talking for too long? Right? Do they not understand? Did they have a test this morning? Actually, kind of empathizing with, with what's happening can, can, I think, really help to reduce frustration. Um, and if frustration does happen, then of course you can deal with the symptoms, right? <laughs> Push it down. Just get on with it. I think we all have to do that sometimes. Yeah. Um, the literature is quite clear, uh, both in laboratories and uh, in real-world situations, that this is not the healthiest way to, to deal with negative emotions like frustration. So it is much better if you can develop strategies or a set of resources to, to not experience frustration in the first place, or to change the way you think about something to, to view it in a positive light. Okay. This is the meta language, which I'm not going to not going to mention today. Right. Okay. So I want to. I'm going to stop talking for a little while because I have spoken for enough. Um, what I'd like to do. What I'm, what I'm going to do today, uh, which is, I'm doing it for the first time, so I, I hope it does work. 
Um, I want to, instead of getting you to think of your own classroom, I want to share some excerpts with you from the interviews uh, and the study that I did. Uh, so this is excerpts of teachers in Japan talking about their frustrations. And I think their voices are really important, which is why I'm, I'm not just giving you, they said this, right? I really want you to read what they have to say. Um, this study uh, was done uh, in Japan with seven participants, university EFL teachers, uh, three female, four male, um, teaching for 12 years, and in Japan for seven years. I think they were all, they are all teachers who teach for a career, that's really important, uh, and I think they are all uh, experienced uh, and, and dedicated teachers. Um, and I was lucky enough to, um, to interview them, but also to watch them teach as well, and to do a stimulated recall. Um, if everybody knows stimulated recall. So I, I watched them teach and made notes and recorded uh, their classes, and then we, we talked about their class together to learn about what was actually happening in the moment in the class, and that was really beneficial. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, I'm going to give you, yeah, I'm going to give you the five uh, excerpts. What I'd like you to do first of all is please just to read them, and I wonder, uh, I wonder which of the quotes resonate with you, which ones. Have you experienced which ones? Which ones do you think? Yeah, I know that. I felt that way. Okay. Maybe you can read it and just share that to start with. Just a few minutes. Maybe you can just share with your with your group. Um, Sorry, it's inside. You'll find them uh, inside on the first. Oh, you one inch. Yeah, one inch. You can find it on the inside of my Hey, how do I the best? Yeah, well, they're very strict about paper. Quite cheaper paper, but oh, they have. Feel free to share, you know, share, share your ideas as well. 